Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. This is episode two of our T3485 that will include the bed spring armor, which, of course, places it in the Battle of Berlin. In episode one, we built our model and we put a lot of shiny bling all over it. And now in this episode, episode two, we're going to change it from a nice, shiny, brand new model to something that looks a little bit more appropriate for the, I don't know, the uh, destructive, battle-hardened scene of the Berlin streets. Well, of course, this means that the focus of this episode is going to be the painting and weathering of this T-34. So we have a, quite a bit to do here on this episode. So strap in, folks. Let's get going. Well, the first thing I wanted to do was make sure that I have a pretty nice surface to do the painting over, and that was a just a spray coat of Mr. Surfacer 1200. Over that, I decided to go ahead and do, I guess you'd call it a little bit of pre-shading with a little bit of black, but mostly I'm just worried about making sure that a lot of those hatch areas, the seam lines, the vents, things like that, are all just nice and dark, so nothing really pokes through with that gray primer. And so now that I have the primer and a little bit of that pre-shading in place, now it's time to add the color. And for that, I'm using AK Real Colors 4BO straight from the bottle. And it's just, you know, in this case, I'm just adding the color to the surface. Um, a little bit of translucence there, so a little bit of that pre-shading will show through. A little bit of shadowing will show through. And then once I have a pretty solid, stable base color, then I'll come back in and start lightening it just a little bit, lightening the base color. And I've done that here, again, using AK Real Colors. And I'm not really doing, say, modulation in the traditional sense. It's more like the old-fashioned cloud pattern. Just making a little bit of randomness, color, lightning, fading, whatever, here and there. But it's just to add a little bit of contrast and a little bit of interest to the base colors. This whole idea of making this stage, this, these early stages of the base colors, a little bit more visually interesting, so a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more like I said, interesting. To me, that really plays heavily into how the final project will end up looking. We're going to be adding so many different layers of weathering and paints and things like that as we go through it. But laying down these first steps here that have just a little bit extra interest to a little bit of variation, each time that we add a second layer or a third layer or a fourth layer, they play, it a, play a little differently off of these colors. And so all of a sudden, it's not nearly as contrasty as it looks now. And we get some really nice effects with really not having to work very hard at achieving them. Hopefully that will become apparent as we move through this project and, and become a little bit more self-evident. If you recall from episode one, you'll know that I'm using the Ryefield Models Chinese volunteer version of the T-3485, a post-war version of the vehicle. And I did that because the Chinese volunteer version most closely matched Factory 183, which were the vehicles that were most used with the bed spring armor in the Battle of Berlin. That said, however, that leaves a hole in my box because, because it's a post-war vehicle, I have no markings appropriate for this vehicle. Well, that's the bad news. The good news is I just decorated a whole bunch of buildings in the last series using the AK weathering pencils, and I thought, what the heck, let's give it a shot on this and see if I can add the vehicle numbers and the white identification stripes. So let's give that a shot. So the first thing I do with the pencils is to moisten the surface, and that just allows a nice easy transfer so you can basically draw or almost paint onto the surface with the pencil. And the other nice thing is, as you just saw right there, is if you make a mistake, it's really very, very easy to clean up. Just take a brush that's a clean brush with, with water on it and wipe it off, and you can start right again. And then, like I said, in all instances, it's kind of a combination between the pencils and the water. So the, the surface of the model itself is not very, very wet. It's just just moistened, just, just slightly. And then once, you, once the pencil gets a little bit of touch of that moisture on it, it really just transfers nice and easily. And it is truly just like writing onto the side of the model. And then the other nice thing about these pencils are, too, is that they're really easy to, to kind of clean up and refine. So once I have the basic outline, for instance, on these turret numbers, I can come back in with a brush, a fine tip brush. This happens to be a number zero brush with moistened with water and just really sharpen up some of those outline, those edges and things like that. And just just make a little bit crisper and clean up a little bit of those edges where, you know, maybe I, I, my writing wasn't all that all that wonderful. And of course, it's the same process of moistening the surface and then writing onto the surface while adding these white ID stripes around the turret. 
The one thing that I do notice about the pencils, which is not a bad thing, it's just the way it is, is once you apply the pencil, so you moisten the surface, apply the pencil, and then it's really important to come back in with a dampened brush over the top of the, of the pencil strokes themselves. And that just, it's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see it when you do it. It just changes it, what is a pencil stroke into what looks closer to a paint stroke and just kind of, I don't know, unifies unifies those surfaces a little bit more. And it also really affixes the pencil onto the surface. So there's really no no fear of any of these pencil strokes being rubbed off in, in the next steps coming up. Well, speaking of the next steps, here we are. We're at the weathering stage. And if you've been watching any of my videos up to this point, any of my video series, you know that I am a huge fan of using oil paints. Oh, this is always the hardest part right now. So you've got your base colors on, you've got your model ready to go, and now it's time to do the weathering. And maybe you have or some sort of an image in your head of how you want the, the model to look when you're done. And it's just like, how do I get started? And so with that said, let's dive in. So I figured, you know, one of the easier places on this model to start would be where the fender has been ripped off here on the front corner. And that's going to be a little bit of a dirtier area. So it's just kind of a nice, easy place to kind of get my feet wet and start getting a feel and get the model started in the right direction. I begin with using a light dust tone. And then over that, once those are established, I'll start adding a little bit darker dust tones. The basic process is always the same. Maybe an hour or two hours before I start working on a model, I'll lay out my colors onto that little cardboard palette. And that just sucks out the linseed oil to make sure that the paints are, they, they're not glossy and they'll dry faster basically. And then it's just about adding a very minimal amount of, of thinner. I use odorless thinner and applying the colors where I want them. So it's about applying the color, then using a stipple brush to kind of feather the colors back or blend the colors a little bit and just start adding layer upon layer. And I'll work my way around the model. So I've, I've talked about this before. I'll build things up to maybe say about 80% in any particular area. And then I'll move on and keep working around the model. And then I start to see the model as a whole. And then I can come back and start adding a little bit of finer details here and there or bring it all the way back up to 100%. One question that I get asked a lot in chats or emails or even in the comments below is how long does it actually take, take me to, to do certain steps or to work on these models? Because, you know, obviously in terms of the video, these are all edited, it's condensed, it's, you know, it's pretty quick. In terms of like say this oil step right now with the weathering, this is about three days worth of, of work. So that would be three days of bench time and let's say dedicate maybe seven hours a day for that. So was that 21 hours worth worth of work in order to, to weather the model using the oil paints? And like I said, that gets me to a point about 80% done or 80% complete with the oils and the weathering at this stage. And then once I start pulling everything together, because like I said, we're going to be putting together a, a diorama scene and everything else, then I'll start doing the final 20%. And that often will take even longer because, you know, as you get to the finer and finer details, then you're spending a little bit more time and being a little bit more careful. And then speaking of refinements, I wanted to try to unify a little bit of the oil paints. I, I don't know. There was something about it was just a little bit off. I lost a little bit of my coloring along the way. So I decided to try something a little bit out of the ordinary. Now, I've done this before, so I knew I can get away with it. But I wanted to give just basically a light filter of 4BO. But this is acrylics. So I'm putting acrylic over the top of oil paints. And yes, you can do that. So the basic trick is you, you pre-moisten the surface of the model. So that's got a little bit of water on there. And that kind of breaks the surface tension a little bit. And then use very thin paints. And the fact that there, there is still some surface tension there leads to some pretty neat effects, in my opinion. And so as you can see on the turret roof here, you get these areas which now look a little bit like they're scuffed off and cleaned off from the dirt because that's areas where the paint has adhered to the surface and other areas it just wipes right back off. Okay, now that we have the model more or less painted where it's, it's manageable, now it's time to start working on that bed spring armor and get that up to ready to be installed. Now, of course, that armor right now, the bed spring is photo etched and it's super shiny. And, you know, honestly, this is going to be a little bit harder to paint. And I'm really not wouldn't look forward to painting the bed spring armor, especially because it's mesh. 
And anytime you start adding primer and paint onto mesh screens like this, what you generally end up with, if you're not super careful, is that you end up clogging up or filling up all those little meshed holes. And so I returned to my good friend, the blackening solutions. And just dipping these into the little cup of the blackening, just, well, it blackens the photo etch. And so now I don't need to paint this anymore. And all my screens are just perfectly okay. There's no clogging, no ugliness I have to take care of. And now I can just start adding a little bit of color here and there just to give them that battlefield look of a little bit of rust and dust and all the rest of that will, that will go with it. So I'm starting off with just a little bit of acrylic paint here with the sponge and mostly what I'm doing is just hitting some of those areas where the blackening fluid didn't discolor the photo etch. So, I, so in these cases I'm actually painting it. And then in terms of the weathering, I'm just going to go back to the oil paints and just kind of give them some light washes here and there. And again, I'm using kind of an ochre color. I'm using rust colors, some dust colors, just, just whatever. And once they dry, they'll add a really nice patina to these. Well, I'm getting to that point where I'm, I guess maybe I'm just a little impatient, but I want to get the wheels and tracks on this thing. Yes, I've given some weathering, some attention to the weathering with the oils onto the lower hull, but I want to add a little bit more grit and grime and such, and that's where the pigments come in here. So adding a few colors of pigments into my little lid, I'll give a wash of pigment fixer over the lower of the hull, and by allowing the pigments to kind of drop onto the surface, it gives it really nice texture, it kind of gives it that kind of crunchy, built up layer of, of dirt and such. And I'll vary the colors as I go through this. So it adds some of that character and interest we're always looking for. Once the fixer has dried, then I could see the areas where, you know, the, the pigments didn't drop exactly where they should have, or I've got these blank spaces here and there, or the colors aren't quite right or whatever. So I can just stipple on a little bit more pigment here and there and just kind of, I don't know, bulk up or enhance or make pretty uh, the mud effects on the lower hull here. Well, one of the reasons I wanted to get those tracks on and the wheels is because I needed to or wanted to add the bed spring armor. And I know that once that armor has been glued onto the sides of this model, it's going to be a little bit delicate to the touch. And by golly, in all honesty, adding this bed spring armor onto this model is probably the most tedious and fiddly part of this entire project. This was not a lot of fun, but I have to say that I'm glad that I soldered these parts together because there's quite a bit of manipulation. You have to kind of move the little legs and stands around in order to make contact with the side of the, the model. And I could imagine that easily a lot of these little legs would have popped off had they been secured with super glue. But anyway, persevere and work my way around and start adding these little bed spring armors one piece at a time. And these are secured to the model using super glue. So photo etch to the model is with super glue. And that's not the nicest <laughs> bond in itself either. Yeah, I've knocked these off a few times in the process here anyway. However, with all that said, I'm at a point now where this is at a place where I can start moving on to other parts, other elements of what will be the scene. So this is the T3485 as it sits right now with the armor in place. The tracks are on, the wheels are on. Like I said, the weathering is, uh, I did a little bit more, so we're maybe closer to 85, 90% since the last time we talked about weathering, which is going to set us up really nicely for the next episode where we'll start working on some of the components for the scene itself. If you do like this channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. It does help get it out to more and more folks. If you'd like to support this channel even further, I do have a Patreon page, and the link for that is below. And over there, you can check out the benefits, such as early viewings of these videos, photographs of the ongoing project, and of course, we have a chat, which is always open, so questions and comments and answers and whatever are all available. Like I said, next episode, we'll be working on some of the components for this scene. There's still quite a bit to do. We've got other... We got a diorama to build. We got some figures to paint. Um, <laughs> we got a lot to do. So, until then, and until the next time, take care, guys. Happy modeling. And we'll see you soon.